So the program I'm about to describe, I formulated for you based on the neuroscience literature and the psychology literature of learning and this concept of task bracketing. It involves dividing the 24 hour days into what I call three phases, because it turns out that particular phases of the day are associated with particular biological underpinnings, chemicals and neural circuits and so forth. And in doing so, it will make it far more likely that you'll be able to regularly engage in these habits and activities over a long period of time. The first is phase one, which is zero to eight hours after waking up, approximately. Okay, you can put a plus or minus 30 minutes on this for yourself. The second phase is the nine to 14, maybe 15 hours after you wake up. And the third phase is 16 to 24 hours after waking up. So today I'm going to use the to bed at 10 p.m. and the wake up time of 7 a.m. as the framework for this, but you could adopt it easily to your particular schedule. Phase one, which again is zero to eight hours after waking, has a particular neurochemical signature. Regardless of what you do, the neuromodulators norepinephrine, as well as epinephrine, so that's noradrenaline and adrenaline, as well as the neuromodulator dopamine, tend to be elevated during that first zero to eight hours after waking. There are a number of reasons for this related to the fact that also cortisol is higher in our brain and bloodstream. It's a healthy level of cortisol upon waking. Body temperature is increased, etc. And there are several things that perhaps we should all be doing. I've talked about many of these on the podcast before that in addition to those chemicals, further support an alert and focused state. The sunlight, exercise, cold exposure, caffeine, tyrosine, etc., all of those place the brain and body into a state in which your whole system is action and focus oriented. So as you list out or think about the various habits that you'd like to adopt in your life, take the habits for which you know there's, they are the hardest for you to engage in. They require the most activation energy and put those in this zero to eight hours after waking. This will greatly facilitate your performance of those new habits. I'm certain of that. But by placing them in this broader window of, of zero to eight hours after waking, what you're doing is you're creating task bracketing. You're making it such that your nervous system will predict when you are going to lean in in order to perform particular types of habits. What we're really talking about here is leveraging neural systems in order to help you make it more likely that you're going to be able to engage and maintain a particular habit. But there are other phases of the day, and those turn out to be useful for acquiring other types of habits. Phase two, as I mentioned, is about, again, these aren't specifics, but about nine to 14 or 15 hours after waking. During this phase of the day, because of the circadian shifts in our biology, the amount of dopamine and norepinephrine that's circulating in our brain and bloodstream tends to start to come down. And... Levels of cortisol tend to start to come down. That's the ideal circumstance. In fact, you don't really want elevated cortisol late in the day. That's actually a signature of depression and anxiety and a number of other uh, unfortunate things. And a different neuromodulator, serotonin, is starting to rise. Serotonin is definitely going to be highest in this second half of the day and tends to lend itself to a more relaxed state of being. So how do you leverage phase two of the day for habit formation? Well, given what we know about the neurochemistry of learning and memory, given what we know about task formation and its reliance on certain forms of neuroplasticity, the second half of the day is a terrific time to take on habits and things that you're already doing that require very little override of limbic friction. So these might be things that you could categorize uh, in common terms as kind of mellower activities. It might be journaling. It might be uh, that you already are performing music or I should say practicing music regularly, but that there's a particular type of music that is hard for you or that you're working on a particular piece of music or you're trying to learn a language, something that's a little bit challenging, but doesn't require a ton of energy in order to override that limbic friction. The second half of the day is a much better time to do that. Less resistance, as we might say. But of course, resistance has a neural substrate. And the reason for doing those things in the second part of the day, the so-called phase two, as I've called it, part of the day, is because your ability to override resistance is really diminished in this second phase of the day. But what I'm referring to is the acquisition of new behaviors 
and placing those consistently at the second half of the day in order to engage this task bracketing mechanisms that I talked about before. One of the hallmark features of those basal ganglia circuits for go and no go is that they are associated with certain neurochemicals, dopamine and serotonin, acetylcholine and other neurochemicals and that you're going to be doing things that require less conscious override of limbic friction in phase two. The next phase we're gonna talk about, which is phase three. Phase three of the 24 hour schedule runs from about 16 to 24 hours after waking. During that period of time, there are a few things that are going to support being in a state of mind, state of body that are going to allow neuroplasticity to occur, that are going to allow the rewiring that you've triggered during the waking part of the day to actually take place. Those things are very low to no light, meaning keeping your environment very dark or very, very dim. I don't think it's necessary to sleep in a room that's complete blackness. I think that's a little bit overkill, but for most people keeping the room dark and keeping the room temperature low is very beneficial because light inhibits the hormone melatonin, can make it very hard to fall back asleep if you inhibit melatonin. The effects of light inhibiting melatonin are actually very potent, happens very, very quickly. So try and keep the lights low, calm. So things like low light, low temperature, the supplements I mentioned, adjusting your eating schedule appropriately, obviously not drinking caffeine in the middle of the night or too close to bed, that's gonna be critical. In fact, ideally, you wouldn't ingest any caffeine in phase two of the day so that you could get into this deeper state of rest in which habit formation and neuroplasticity can occur. So when you do things at particular phases of the day under particular conditions of neurochemistry, what you're doing is you're giving the brain a very predictable set of sequences that during sleep, it can start to put into your hard drive, if you will. It can really program it into your nervous system so that within a short period of time, hopefully within 18 or maybe even six days or who knows, maybe even fewer days, you'll find that executing those behaviors is very, very straightforward for you.